Hello, this is Dr. John Spink, and I'll be your instructor for cybersecurity and the role of the food safety manager. And this is a post workshop update. It's included some notes from uh, throughout this working session and the uh, follow up workshop. I'm a director of the Food Fraud Prevention Academy, and I'm also an assistant professor in the Department of Supply Chain Management at Michigan State University. And this is a presentation that was originally given at the Food Safety Summit 2022 on Tuesday, May 10th. Let's get started. First off, uh, for those of you who know me as a food fraud prevention, there's a good question of how do, how, why cybersecurity? How did we get to cybersecurity? And there's a number of reasons, and uh, it's been an area that's been uh, uh, in and around the research core for some time. First off, e-commerce and food fraud. So online marketplaces and sales channels have been a source of food fraud for counterfeit products, stolen goods, diverted goods, and expired products. So it's a common starting point. We've um, included this in the food fraud vulnerability assessments for online sales, specifically at a workshop conference for the Food Safety Authority of Ireland, and that was an Interpol, Europol conference, uh, and others. So been looking at this for a while. And there have conducted research and presentations on the impact of e-commerce on food safety and food fraud since 2016 at least. And then separately is looking at ISO 22000, food safety management. And in that, in 2018, there's a new section and it expanded to say uh, and include external issues, including cybersecurity and food fraud. And so there was a question there of, was it cybersecurity and food fraud or separate or together? And so that led us to need to do a little bit of research. And really that question of, of what is cybersecurity under the food safety management system uh, overview um, and food fraud as well. And then supply chain management education. So um, since 2019, I've been teaching undergraduate classes in supply chain management, specifically introduction to supply chain management. Every business school student takes the class and we cover hot topics. And uh, over the last couple of years, um, cybersecurity has been a very hot topic. And so we've covered that in that uh, from a supply chain management perspective. And overall, looking at vulnerability assessments, um, really, there's really we look at all novel events under this initial screening concept, and it does apply in the enterprise risk COSO management principles when a company or enterprise needs to look at, at really broad emerging risks. Cybersecurity definitely falls into that. So we look at applying our food fraud initial screening tool, the food fraud vulnerability assessment, and generally FASA. So there's been a lot of activities in and around cybersecurity. And just as of late, uh, specifically the, for the Food Safety Summit, it led to having this be a specific focus of a presentation. So uh, with the background uh, on looking at this as a hot topic in ISO 22000, um, it, this is specifically a chapter in a new book for, of mine on uh, supply chain management introduction. So in there is a draft chapter on ISO 22000 specifically, that's food safety management. And so if you've got, con if you'd like to review it or, or provide comments, it's still uh, in draft mode. So you'll be able to, uh, to add, add that. And um, you know any questions you have, we can then expand the, the uh, topic. So the role of food safety manager in cybersecurity or vice versa. And that's a real key here is to think about, okay, and, you know, are we responsible and accountable for everything? And, and how much are we responsible and accountable for everything? And what are these specifically, uh, the, the specific requirements when there's a new topic? So agenda, just overall to tell you here, you're going to start, we're going to start with the Food Safety uh, Modernization Act and, and looking at food safety management systems in general. And that starts at the real core is ISO 22000, food safety management. If you didn't know, that's also really the foundation uh, and the starting point of GFSI and food safety standards in general. And that's also including uh, Food Safety Modernization Act. And then to look at it from a separate direction, once we start to say protecting the supply chain, the food supply chain and protecting from food safety, and then protecting from a specific type of risk, let's look at it from the risk, that specific risk. So from the cybersecurity general concepts, the, uh, a, a common starting point is the NIST cybersecurity framework. So we'll start there. We'll look at, at the direction it gives for all cybersecurity and then specifically into food. Uh, ISO 27000 is information security. Within that is ISO 27034, cybersecurity. So now we're getting to something very specific. It's not just IT or computer systems. It's specifically cybersecurity. And then um, I, more recently, NIST uh, uh, published a new report on prioritizing cybersecurity security risk for enterprise risk management (ERM). That's perfect because all of all the uh, the research we've done in the food fraud 
uh, prevention has focused on how much is enough, and that's based on enterprise risk management. So to see that there's a common application of that concept uh, in cybersecurity, there's a number of, of points where we're integrating the research. And that gets to the very specific application question of the role of the food safety manager. So what do you need to do? <laughs> good, good starting point. And that's the, the bottom line is the bottom line. So um, what directly are you required to do as a food safety manager, um, specifically looking at the certifications or laws, uh, standards, and that would be GFSI, the food safety management systems, uh, food laws and regulations. And then you've got your own corporate requirements, whether that's from a consumer protection, a food safety, food quality, uh, or corporate compliance, you've got some other requirements. So first off, the Food Safety Modernization Act. Now, this was published in, in September 2016. And in there, there is a specific requirement that the hazard analysis must be written regardless of its outcome, meaning that every type of hazard needs to have a written hazard analysis. You can't just say, ah, we're not worried about cyber. Um, you have to have it documented. Now, that doesn't say it has to be 10 pages long or have a thousand data points. It could be one sentence, I guess. But, but the key is that it's, it is there. So is that uh, is cybersecurity explicit or implicit in FISMA? Well, the, the key there is if it's a hazard, it must be assessed. So it's not explicitly listed. Cybersecurity is not listed, but it, it is implicit in there that all types of hazards need to be assessed. Cybersecurity is a potential hazard. Now let's look at the, the GFSI food safety management system. When we look at the benchmarking process in the version 2020, uh, which is the most recent one, we're asking questions of is, is cybersecurity explicitly or implicitly impl uh, um, included? So when we look at keywords, cyber, zero keyword, uh, keywords found, internet, information technology even. So no, are there really no cybersecurity requirements? Well, let's look under, under some of these other areas. Now, specifically, cybersecurity is not identified, but under food de the de definition of food defense, the process to ensure the security of food, food ingredients, feed or food packaging from all forms of inten intentional malicious attack. That would then, I mean, all forms would include implicitly cybersecurity. When we look at the definition of food safety, assurance that any product within the GFSI scopes of recognition will not cause adverse health effect. So when you're combining things of looking for all forms of malicious intentional attack, also looking at um, any, any action that will cause an adverse health effect, then again, implicitly cybersecurity would be included. When we look at HACCP in the definition, a system, that, a system which identifies, evaluates, controls, and monitors hazards relating to food safety. So again, not explicitly listed, but it is implied. Corporate or customer requirements. So we're looking here, you know, beyond the food safety uh, requirements to, to supplier qualification. And there are some times where um, a supplier uh, survey or qualification uh, system includes information technology, including cybersecurity protection of systems. And that would be information technology or cybersecurity standards. Now, when the IT people are talking to the IT people, then they talk about things like ISO 27000 or ISO 27034, or those NIST standards. So from a food safety perspective, you might not have seen those in the supplier uh, agreements, but uh, when you start to look, they, they probably are there. Now they're looking at different, they're focusing and prioritizing on different parts of your company, but still food safety does apply. But <laughs> what's the problem? What are the requirements for your company and what are the requirements for your food safety management system? So it's not just overall cybersecurity. You're not in charge of protecting your entire company. You have a specific scope of work. And, and even the overall cybersecurity requirements for your company, you're not accountable for every one of those. You know, what you are required to cover are the food safety management systems. So we'll look at those in a little bit more detail to just try to get some real clarity on what our role is. So we'll look at some cybersecurity hot topics before we get into more details. So there's definitely high profile incidents and solar winds is one that was really uh, brought this to the uh, collective attention. Uh, it was malware and it was software access. So it was a certain systems that were bought and widely bought e and procured by even government agencies that had basically a back door. There was a way or a system weakness that someone could infiltrate and monitor systems. Colonial Pipeline, remember that? That was uh, ransomware, and they proactively shut down their entire system. A key is that that part of their um, their network was accessed and um, shut down, 
and they weren't sure how far it went. So they shut down their entire IT system. Two things that are going on there. One is, is that fortunately it was in a small part of the system away from regular operations. But second is that companies weren't real sure what all was connected. So uh, the key there was that this brought up the attention because uh, it, well, it amplified the uh, understanding of the problem because it's no longer theoretical that someone could get in and look at your information or steal it, that, that all of a sudden companies shut down, if you remember, that shut down a lot of gasoline supply for the entire eastern seaboard. JBS US Holdings, so ransomware and an encrypted server. So here again, there was an attack. It happened to be a food company, um, and the, com the company uh, sh was shut down. Genome information cyber theft. So the uh, unlocking and uh, um, I, and you know refining the uh, understanding, the research on the human genome and the genomes in general is is very uh, um, high tech, and there's definitely high cyber theft there. Um, Oldsmar Water Authority, so it was remote access and it changed the levels of lye that was in the water treatment plants. Now, fortunately, that was found before the, that product got out um, into the, the public domain, but a key was there, there is an example of uh, a malicious cyber security attack that did uh, uh, get close to public health issues. AmeriCold Logistics, this is ransomware and cold storage, and it encrypted their servers, so it shut down the company there. So when we look at these pro high profile incidents, it's clear that cybersecurity is a big deal and does have extremely intense uh, and high consequences for uh, all companies. But a question we're asking then is, is the target a company or industry or their money? And one a key here is that um, the, the cyber attacks could have done more. Um, the Oldsmar Water Authority did uh, achieve remote access to some of the, those that equipment. Miracold Logistics shut down some of their refrigerators. But really, the key was the, tar the target in most cases is the money, the money of the company. The company happens to be a food company. Hot topics and pressure. So there's more activity in different areas going on. It's important to look at this to understand, you know, say, where the food uh, agencies may be focused. FDA has a, had a, a public meeting, a new era in smarter food safety. It was a public meeting on e-commerce, October 19th to 21st. And that was in the middle of some of our intense research in this area. So uh, an FDA meeting on e-commerce, that uh, raised raised a lot of uh, attention. We focused uh, intensely on that and presented at the public meeting. A key is though it focused on the business to consumer com commerce and the food safety hazards during the preparation and delivery by new businesses. This was really not looking at all e-commerce across the entire food supply chain. It was looking at specifically uh, the preparation and, and delivery, meal delivery systems, such as the uh, you know, DoorDash delivering product, um, even the US mail uh, delivering some food in, in a different way. So um, that would include things like produce and meal kits, uh, subscription services, ghost kitchens or dark stores, um, and also that delivery buys things that play new uh, food delivery uh, um, uh, um, avenues such as U.S. Postal Service, UPS, FedEx, Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, and others. So when we see this was FDA and food e-commerce, it wasn't all e-commerce. It focused only on a specific uh, type of activity within the marketplace. So wait. Is, are we talking about cybersecurity or e-commerce or both? Great question. As we go deeper, we start to ask questions of, you know, what's our role? What's the topic? What, what, what do we mean by this? And so let's look at, at cybersecurity, e-commerce in a little bit more detail. So um, before getting into that, we'll look at uh, this FDA new era for smarter food safety and specifically the e-commerce meeting, the, the electronic order and delivery um, activities. We had uh, a series of seven blog posts reviewing different parts of that, and you'll see the link there to the uh, actual FDA documents. So even though this might not apply directly to you, say if you're a food manufacturer that sells to through grocery stores, retailers, but one thing that's interesting to look at how FDA and government agencies are looking at emerging risks. We can take that insight and apply it to our the way that we address uh, cybersecurity. And so FDA is taking a, a proactive first step aligned with the standards of ISO 31000, that's risk management, and they're looking at establishing the contact. So at the very beginning, they're looking at ways that, that they are, um, or what's the scope? Um, and they did narrow in the scope um, using those basically basic type of, of standards. So we can take from that when we look at cybersecurity in a specific situation, whatever the specific situation is for your company, we can also use those, those, those type of um, methods such as ISO 31000. 
They also, FDA was also following ISO 9000 quality management and ISO 22000 food safety management. And that next step is to gather incident information and conduct a risk identification before considering risk assessment models or methods. So it's not fire ready aim, it's ready aim fire. So getting ready is establishing the context, specifically looking at delivery of prepared food uh, in new channels. And then AIM is looking specifically at the food safety issues and then looking at only after doing that and looking at the, the uh, risk assessments, identifying if there's a real risk, if there's something that really needs to be addressed, then they would look at, uh, at, assess, at looking at risk assessment models and methods. So at this point, FDA is just gathering information to start scoping out the risk assessment. So we see a methodical approach and there's uh, links and references there. Yes, e-commerce, but really review of a novel supply chain is supply channel. It's really not cyber, it's not cybersecurity. So we're already identifying e-commerce product being sold or ordered electronically versus cybersecurity protecting from harm. So look at from another direction from ISO 22000 food safety management. And I'm actually a voting member of the technical committee 23 working group 17, which is ISO 22000. So it's been interesting to be involved um, you know, very early and very at the core of those processes to see how things are, are working from an ISO standard. So I have a lot of personal perspective on uh, this, on the development of the standard and the, um, the implementation. When we look at ISO 22000 food safety management, it builds on ISO 9000 quality management and ISO 31000 risk management and others. And those are the two real key. Quality management is how we coordinate to uh, um, um, supply the product uh, that, that is uh, intended um, in, in the, uh, uh, the measures and the, the quantities and the, or the, uh, the, the um, attributes that are, are defined. And risk management is a standard way of looking at those anomalies. Uh, and then within that, those are international standards, and there's a number of, of uh, technical subcommittees and different groups working on those. The focus on health is on health hazards from food safety incidents, and that's for specifically ISO 22000. And the goal is to reduce health hazards and increase the methodology to reduce the possibility of incidents. A couple of keys here is that ISO 22000 is a management system. It's, it's trying to get companies to put programs and plans in place that monitor so that the hazards can be identified and controlled. That applies to us when we're looking at food safety and looking at cybersecurity. Focuses on health hazards new and new food fraud requirements in 2018. So originally, um, a, a food fraud, food defense, cybersecurity was all implied in the hazard and a lot of people then didn't address it. They felt like it was outside of scope. But in 2018, it was listed, it was noted specifically uh, that it was uh, included in, in the hazard. Now, again, as I mentioned, uh, ISO 22000 is a foundation for GFSI and food safety management systems. So this is, this is integrated with everything that we've been, been looking at and working on over the last few years. Now, there's a lot of different uh, sub uh, uh, documents and their substandards, not gonna go into those, but a key is ISO 22000 is pretty holistic. Things like looking at traceability in the feed su supply chain, food packaging and, and others. So there's a lot of resources there. Uh, to, to help specific industries looking at the food safety management. The overview of ISO 22000, a key there is looking at to prevent hazards or reduce hazards to acceptable levels. So that's just the overall broad concept. So it's important to say when we're looking at addressing ISO 22000, we're looking at these really specifically look at hazards to acceptable levels. Now, but then what are the, what are the cybersecurity requirements for ISO 22000 compliance? And the scope includes anything that could lead to a food safety-based adverse health effect, period. So if cybersecurity and access to the system could lead to a problem, then that's, that's, that falls within that requirement. And we look here closer at another section. It does say external and internal issues. External issues would be types of a cybersecurity attack. Also, there's a new note under that section uh, it, it, and it only mentions it once and only in a note, but still it's mentioned. And you'll see here is cybersecurity and food fraud and food defense and intentional contamination as well. But the focus for us here is cybersecurity and food fraud. So now cybersecurity is explicitly identified in ISO 22000. Now there's only one mention of that term in the entire document. There's no definition. There's no other, other uh, uh, explicit um, response is needed, but the bottom line, it's there and it's something that we do now need to deal with. Now, the other thing is looking at this is cybersecurity and food fraud. 
just like you see food defense and intentional contamination. But cybersecurity and food fraud, there's no comma there. And so it insinuates cybersecurity and food fraud together. Now, do they mean e-commerce at that point um, or, or not? The bottom line is we have to take what, what ISO 22000 says or doesn't say. So it's unclear. So what we could do is we could look at other parts of ISO that have really set the precedence for what is cybersecurity. So how formal or direct are the ISO 22000 related cybersecurity requirements? There's no further details or explicit compliance requirements. It's the bottom line. ISO 22000 does not have a definition of cybersecurity. We could look at ISO 28000 supply chain security. That does not even mention cybersecurity at all. Now that's an older, older uh, report. But um, so even, even cybersecurity or supply chain security doesn't mention cyber. The, ISO, the GFSI benchmark does not mention cybersecurity. So now what? Can you ignore it? Well, you might be able to, but let's look a little further before we figure out what our role is and whether we hope whether we really want to ignore it. We'll look at insight from where cybersecurity is mentioned elsewhere in ISO. So we'll look at different types of standards. We'll actually start with NIST before getting into ISO. So NIST is national, the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology. It's a U.S. Department of Commerce organization. They coordinate it for measurement standards, including information security standards for federal computer systems. So a key is NIST identifies and specifies how to deal with the U.S. government. U.S. government is a huge customer, and so a lot of companies are, are dealing with the U.S. government, so they just implement those systems across uh, all of the U.S. commerce. So uh, NIST did create the cybersecurity framework. So it's overall expectation of, well, just what is cybersecurity and how, how do you look at it? Uh, they have an information security handbook and the guide for managers. So the thing's great here is there's more guidance. Now you're a food safety manager. This is getting into pretty hardcore uh, information technology and even beyond information technology into cybersecurity. But the key is that we as researchers can look at it for, for real guidance on what our role is as more practitioners or application uh, um, and the application out of things. They also have managing information security. And more on the way, as you'll note later, is uh, the enterprise risk management uh, report. So when we look at the ISO 27000 information security and ISO 2701 is the, the management system requirements. And its entire series, it's a management system and it's, it's overall standards, including uh, from 2701 is the management system requirement all the way down to 27032. Uh, for uh, cybersecurity. It does define in their information security incident management. Now, again, this is not food safety, but these are, we're looking to, to get insight on our role in food safety. We're looking at what are the definitions and, and the specific expo expectations of an enterprise. So again, one is looking at information security incident management, how you're, how you're uh, dealing with those incidents. Also, the requirements themselves are for establishing, implementing, maintaining, and continually improving an information security management system within the context of the organization. So what that means is there is an overall overarching uh, um, security management system. And one part of that would, in a food company would be food safety. So we're starting to see where these things fit together. So definitions, if you know anything about me, it's I, I feel a need to start at definitions. The key is that we need to understand the real scope at the very beginning uh, when there is a formal definition or not, and that can help us to frame uh, the terminology we use so we're not confusing or also to maybe limit or expand our scope to meet those needs. So at first is cybersecurity or cyberspace security. Interesting, cybersecurity and cyberspace security. So it's preservation of confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information in the cyberspace. This is not saying it's protecting it from attack specifically, but cybersecurity is just preserving the ability for computer systems to operate. If ransomware occurs in there and systems encrypted and can't be accessed, that limits that ability to uh, uh, have the availability of information. So it's cybersecurity, and notice it said cyberspace there too. So that got me looking at, well, what are all these terms specifically? So what's cyberspace? So the cyberspace is that complex environment resulting from the interaction of people, software, and services on the internet. So the cyberspace is the whole space of this thing, stuff that's happening, including software and the people and services activities going on in the internet. So let's look at what's the internet or internetwork, a collection of interconnected networks. So the internet, a lot of times we might think of the internet as cyberspace, but technically when we're talking about things in this, in the NIST sense, 
then um, they, are, they are separate. The internet, so global system of interconnected networks in the public domain. Internet security. So look, we've gone from cybersecurity through some of the definitions and around cyberspace, internet, inter the internet to internet security, preservation of confidentiality, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, availability of information in the internet. So at the beginning, cybersecurity, cyberspace security is looking at all the activities around the system, the people. Internet security is just that interaction online. Virtual world, so simulated environment uh, accessed by multiple users through an online interface. So a virtual world would seem to be things like a marketplace. So we've got some definitions here, and um, hopefully we get clarity on the, the key words to use. Other, other words uh, that are important to understand is e-commerce. So that's just the use of the network technology uh, to buy or sell goods and services. So right there, we've got a clear definition, cybersecurity, cyberspace, internet, and e-commerce. E-commerce is the actual transaction. It's not a whole business. B2B, B2C e-commerce, and that's specifically important because that was the focus of the FDA public meeting. It's uh, it's looking at, at this commercial transactions conducted electronically. So it's basically businesses selling to consumers. That's, or to the, really to the user, the, 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 someone that's going to consume the product. That's not really between businesses. The FDA focus of B2C is uh, electronic transactions for consumption. And just generally to talk about e-business versus e-commerce, um, and that's really just, a, a, you know, it's really a, tr a transaction-based definition of, uh, of, you know, electronic commerce restricted to buying and selling is distinct from conducting e-business. So e-business versus e-commerce. E-business is the overall uh, um, structure, the all the activities, and e-commerce is just the electronic transmission of that buying and selling. So I don't know if this is, uh, well, there's been a lot of found, fun foundation setting, um, not really exciting at this point, but, but ho hopefully what we're doing is really set, again, setting that foundation so we can start to ask the real question of what is the role of the food safety manager. So we're going to get into a little bit more to this, looking at uh, ISO 22000 and specifically 27032 cybersecurity. So within that standard, uh, the specific guideline, you'll see the report on the uh, right, it's emphasis, there's an emphasis on collaboration. It's not just your job or just not the IT department's job. That the key people that are involved here are information security, network security, internet security, and critical information infrastructure protection. So there's a combination of things here. So people that are looking, controlling, and protecting the information itself, like the databases, the lists, the network security, so the systems working, the software, and internet security. Remember, the internet's different. The internet is out there, outside of your company. But then we, the part where we play a role more directly in food safety is critical information and infrastructure protection. So that's where we are, we, you know, whether that, let's say that that is uh, lab results that release product. That is a part of the critical information infrastructure that we're protecting. That is our role. We're part of the collaboration here. Note the difference from uh, in CIIP or CIP. Although for us in food safety, they probably do uh, a lot of times they're they're similar, but 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 the first one is information infrastructure. So it's the information of those lab tests that lead to to things being uh, released. And critical infrastructure protection would be things like more like the entire the entire plant manufacturing operations. And the CIIP protection is is, is with, with these you know function standards. Uh, and that, that then expands into ISO 22000 or for supply chain security 28000. If you're not an IT, if you're not an expert in IT or cybersecurity, and then you're not an expert in food safety or the food manufacturing system operations. So you're not an IT expert, and they're not an expert in the food safety. So that's where our role is. Maybe I misspoke there. So you're not an expert in IT or cybersecurity, and they're not an expert in food safety or the food manufacturing operations. A key as a food safety manager is you playing a role there of identifying what is the critical infrastructure, what is the critical information infrastructure that needs protection, and you play your role to, to watch that. Let's look at NIST. So this is the new NIST report on cybersecurity risk for enterprise risk management, ERM. A key that they've got here is things that we've talked about a lot in previous food fraud prevention uh, research and training is, to, is really to prioritize versus the risk tolerance. Every company has a risk tolerance. Now, uh, when food safety is kind of hard for us to believe that because we're no risk, no food safety risk. Well, the key is it's not no risk. It's uh, we have no tolerance for a hazard that requires a preventive control or a hazard 
above a certain level, but, but we do have some level of risk. Um, you know, if a product has ever been recalled, there's a level of risk. Well, why don't you stop producing that product completely? If there's, if there's some risk, there's a risk tolerance there. For food safety, we're looking at to identify the risk impact and exposure. And those are things that we're gonna to need to do to help the enterprise risk management system, the whole cybersecurity risk, uh, uh, risk tolerance profile or understanding is based on our understanding. And there is a template to list these CIP concerns. So it's great, we've got a starting point. If you use this NIST ERM cybersecurity risk template, then this information should be able to be directly added to the uh, IT cybersecurity systems. So you'll see here, this is directly from the uh, report there, the, the notational, uh, a notional uh, national uh, cybersecurity risk register. So a key here is the part that we uh, really, pro pro where we, we have uh, a role to play is that risk description, risk category, and then looking at the current assessment of likelihood impact exposure rating. So they don't know which lab tests are the most critical, which um, temperature ga monitoring gauges are most critical. In food safety, we do. So we can identify the risk, such as a temperature uh, um, a control being modified. The risk category, however you define those categories, could be there. Um, it, it usually will be defined by those groups. But then the likelihood that it could occur, the impact and exposure rating. So this is where we enter our information. Once we enter information in this format, then the IT people, when they're filling in the rest of, the, rest of these forms, can ask us very specific questions. So application for the Food Safety Summit 2022 Cybersecurity Workshop Part 1 Roundtable Workshop. So this is a summary of our Group 2 discussion. There were three groups, and this is a summary of the results from Group 2 Roundtable Workshop and Brainstorming. And this conduct, was conducted at the Food Safety Summit within the Cybersecurity Workshop Series. Part 1 was an overview and introduction to the topic, and Part 2 was conducted to gather insight on the concerns and applications. So we, we reviewed... Um, a lot of different questions, and then uh, it was it was um, a, a wide range of of uh, stakeholders, um, probably ten or fifteen people per table, and uh, facilitated by some of the other presenters as well. And the key was really interesting to look at, at what some of these um, comments were. Now, boil, boiled them down first to three: uh, an overview and immediate steps. So, first is a recommendation to quantify the risk in terms of food safety management accountability, such as the food safety management system compliance or food laws and regulations. So, a key there is when you're looking at cybersecurity, part of that is is separating the public health threat, but looking at what are the compliance requirements for ISO 22000 or GFSI. Again, remember, there's not much there other than do conduct a hazard analysis. Also look at things like the food safety management systems or a laws and regulations such as the Food Safety Modernization Act. So again, within that is a hazard analysis must be documented regardless of the outcome. Not a lot of details required. So at least we know what our scope is. And a key is could be to classify concerns as a possible hazard that requires a preventive control or, um, or let's say that you failed an audit that an auditor did, did ask about cybersecurity. Well, then that's a good reason to uh, prioritize that because again, passing an audit is a really core basic uh, principle or concept or requirement of, of a company, a food safety management system. And then also to try to identify at some point if this risk is above the ERM COSA risk tolerance. That's gonna take a little while probably for, for that uh, type of insight to be gain, but that's a real key. Every time we find a new incident or a changing uh, a situation, we should judge it within its uh, um, um, assessment of the, of the risk tolerance. Because just because an incident occurs doesn't mean that it's an incident that, that has such a high likelihood or consequence that we need to, we need to address it. So just what we said is, is uh, you know, if you are accountable for making sure that, that, that all the systems are okay, Kind of like just to say there's a certain way you could ask the question to maybe get some attention. So I'm worried about the compliance of our product for what I am accountable for. Now, right there is you're saying, I'm food safety. I'm looking at this problem of cybersecurity. I'm worried about the product I'm supposed to be accountable for. That, that then frames your question within your sphere of responsibility, 100% within your sphere of responsibility. So um, from there, you could say is, is the, you know, there's this new law and I feel it will impact our, my compliance area, but it appears outside my area of responsibility. So how are we addressing it? You, the key there is, is if you just ask the question to say, look, 
this cybersecurity is implicit uh, um, in the food safety management systems. It's explicit in ISO 22000. How are we, you know, it, 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 it's in my compliance area. Um, it's out my, outside of my area responsibility. So IT, what do you have to say about this and how, it, um, how, 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 are, we, how are we addressing it? You're not just asking if it's okay, but you're asking for specific details of how you're addressing that concern. So uh, a, a, a real key basic point is to request an IT uh, audit your people and systems, which will, if only, emphasize you and your team uh, that you're serious about this. So, you know, there's always a, 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 a someone brings up like, oh, we've got a computer that's old and it doesn't have antivirus on it, but it's not connected to the internet. Well, you know, malware can get in there and things can happen. So. Um, and you don't even really know. I mean, um, all of a sudden, then, if you know, people are using their personal cell phones to access some type of controls in a system, that might be very efficient. But there might be different types of risks there that you're not even aware of. You don't even know what could be a risk. So if you request an IT audit, then you're number one being proactive, but also then it's a shared responsibility for all those all those systems. So that's I think that might be the number one uh, takeaway recommendation. And then uh, to list your food safety specific concerns, you, you consider using that NIST ERM template. Um, you know, just start to list if, if, if you don't have that IT audit yet. Uh, that, well, IT audit is gonna look at your, your current systems and equipment. And if you've got some concerns, uh, specifically if there are critical infrastructure protection that, that you feel might be vulnerable, put them in those, that, that template and then um, submit that and discuss it with your cybersecurity group. So some summary notes from the workshop as well. I think some really important concepts uh, to cover, but we've got these steps to review the food safety system, vulnerability from cybersecurity. Really simple steps, but hey, when it's a blank piece of paper, how do you start looking at this? First off is create a, create a map of the manufacturing operations steps, including prerequisite or receiving steps. A lot of times in tasks, if we look at within the operation and we don't really think about those prerequisite programs. So first off, if you've got a map of your entire operation, you've got a starting point. Once you've got that map, you can then identify the systems or steps that are IT intensive or automated systems. So, uh, you know, like, like monitoring of uh, um, refrigerator temperature or oven temperature, that you may have real-time real systems that give you an alert on your mobile phone if there's a problem, but you also then have someone once an hour goes around and does a manual check. So right there, it's in an IT intensive system, but you've got a, um, you've got a, a safety on that. And note, you note those systems that have those redundant checks. So you identify this refrigerator with the uh, IT, IT system, IT intensive system, but you identify the uh, um, the catch there. So if something did go wrong with the IT system, you would still have someone there monitoring it. Review those IT automation, cyber information security network incidents, system weaknesses or concerns. So as we do in food fraud prevention is we start with known incidents, things that have happened at your company, in your industry, of products that you buy or sell, um, and then, then move from there into, into suspicious activity. When you start with actual known incidents, then, I mean, those are things that have happened to you or to, to your industry. So it's no longer just looking at uh, uh, thinking that the sky is falling. You're looking at, at real systems, real weaknesses. The next major summary note is to confirm with the corporate IT team controls such as your, your critical IT systems, access controls, oversight, logging of changes, notification, blah, 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 big long list. So that's a key is that now then when you're know, asking IT to do a uh, audit of, of your group, of your products, your systems, then here's a list of some specific things to ask for. And these came up in, in the, the workshop session of looking at ways that companies were um, hacked basically of cybersecurity uh, problems. Third, review or recommend cross-functional supplier audits that include IT and cybersecurity in addition to food safety, quality, credit, and accounting, et cetera. When we talked about, you know, like when you go on, on, on supplier audits, you know, a lot of times you're looking at the food operations, but as several companies did say is that they go with a team and the credit groups goes in to review credit, accounting comes in, logistics comes in, and then even um, with some of the companies, IT came in. Obviously, it would be a bigger company, but still, um, IT can be involved. Now, maybe even IT doesn't make not go on the, the visit, but IT could be involved somehow with, with a web meeting. So the cross-functional supplier audits are um, a recommendation. And then fourth, review and possibly connect to the food safety cybersecurity processes within other currently implemented monitoring systems, such as quality management. So the key is that you already have a lot of 
monitoring uh, the Internet of Things, the type of, of activities, process controls across your company. And so if you're looking at some food, of these food safety, cybersecurity risks, you might be able to tap into those systems to start to look at those and uh, uh, give yourself either some visibility to weaknesses, monitor some things, or uh, just, just have some feedback. So the call to action, so we covered a lot of concepts here. And um, this was in intended as a foundation educational base. Um, things like with those definitions were important to know what we're talking about, but also to kind of walk you back from the edge to say, okay, what is your role as a food safety manager? It's definitely critical, definitely important. You need to deal with it, but, but how much? What is your actual role? And that's where we'll look at the call to action. So in real general, uh, you know, we're looking at uh, applying those common risk management practices. So that's nothing really novel there other than reminding you that there's not some secret process that they use, uh, secret society of, of methods uh, or private access. It's looking at things like these basic concepts. They're really like HACCP. Identify the food safety or food manufacturing related system weaknesses for cybersecurity. So we said that and when we're looking at that, that uh, mapping and looking at those, those systems. Consider the risk assessment of issues that apply to food safety or quality. So we're honing in. It's one thing if someone wants to ransom, uh, shut down your system and have ransomware to, to have them, them open it back up. It's another if people are accessing uh, to create hazards that require preventive control. So we, we need to focus in on those because you're the food safety manager. You're looking at compliance to ISO 22000. You're looking at compliance to the Food Safety um, Modernization Act. We need to narrow your, your scope. Other people are worried about other areas. Present the concerns in terms of the enterprise risk tolerance. So yes, every incident is bad. When we talk about food fraud, we say, yes, every food fraud incident is bad, of course, but you don't respond to every single one. There's a risk tolerance, there's a priority setting, like law enforcement. So is breaking the law bad? Yes, but people jaywalk all the time and they're not arrested. So that's there's a level of priority. Speeding, so uh, uh, driving over the speed limit is 100% illegal, but uh, oh, on any, any highway, especially if it's rush hour or uh, around a holiday, if you go the speed limit, you're actually probably dangerous if you're driving so slow. So there is an enterprise-wide uh, tolerance and expand from that cybersecurity as a general consideration to those specific type of hazards. So generally, of what is cybersecurity, but then break it down to your specific hazards, such as control of a uh, oven temperature or things like that. Consider using the ERM initial screening method for that type of assessment. The call to action at the end here. So the key is accountable versus responsible. This is the one slide. This is the takeaway for everything here. So you are accountable to confirm that your company meets ISO 22000. Now, that doesn't mean you're doing every single test. It means that you you need to ask enough questions to document that you're meeting that. You're accountable for explaining to IT and cyber your critical information, infrastructure protection, and, and critical infrastructure protection problems. So that's, you're an expert in you and your area. You're accountable for making sure that they understand it and that you feel that the systems are uh, in control. You're not responsible for selecting and implementing the processes across the entire enterprise. You don't want to have one division or one group making all these different decisions than everybody else. Um, you want to have a central group that's looking at the entire enterprise because you may be aware of five uh, specific vulnerabilities, but there may be 50 for your company. Now, now, maybe 45 of those don't usually happen for your group, but if those are system weaknesses that could be exploited, the bad guys are going to try to find any way to exploit them. So that's why you're not responsible there. You're, you are responsible that your team follows the IT cyber security requirements, such as updates and registering all uh, information communication technology equipment. So right there is, I think, a big key is that every time that, that mandate comes out, you have to restart your computer or do whatever, do some training, support it. And that, that's a key is it, because that's a, a real role that you have to, to remind people that it is critical. So the conclusion for a food safety manager, and this is from NIST, from ISO, from other things, is you are not accountable or responsible for conducting IT cybersecurity assessments or selecting, implementing, and managing those systems. You are accountable for sharing your expert functional area insight on critical infrastructure protection, and that's what processes are the most vulnerable and why, and assuring your system is covered. You are accountable to make sure that you are meeting the FISMA and GFSI requirements for, cons for considering all hazards, including those of cybersecurity 
and e-commerce. So again, we're identifying your role, your specific area of expertise, your accountable area, and then from there, which, which of those items include some cybersecurity uh, overview. So we covered a lot there, um, and we really don't have other training or programs or things like that other than the chapter there. So if you're interested in this, um, please click on that chapter. Uh, as that chapter is edited, that, that link will continue to be updated. Um, at this point, we'll take more questions about cybersecurity and the role of the food safety manager. Thank you.